good morning uh, the topic today will be autism spectrum disorders uh, my name is dr agila i'm assistant professor in the department of psychiatry consultants by her chairman so here we have uh, the table of contents that is the introduction and the history epidemiology etiopathogenesis clinical features neuroimaging disease treatment and other disorders and the conclusion so this is the autism spectrum like in other way autistic disorders asperger's disorders childhood disintegrative disorder rett's disorders pervasive developmental disorder not otherwise specified now icd10 gives uh, f84 as pdd that is pervasive developmental disorder 84.0 as childhood autism 0.1 as atypical 0.2 as rett then rest of them are under uh, other uh, childhood uh, disorders uh, one to be noted is 84.5 that is asperger syndrome now uh, icd11 that is, uh, is is saying something like the 6a02 autism spectrum disorder now 6a02.0 is autism spectrum disorder without disorder of idd with mild or moderate impairment of language so now this is a new mild or no impairment so now we have mild or no impairment with without with without with impairment and we have with disorder with impairment functional language so it's basically a combination of um, autism spectrum and idd along with functional aspect with functional language so nowadays um, it's it's going to be more specified now idd has become a part of almost all the developmental disorders so uh, even if you take adhd there is a comorbidity of idd then autism then um, language disorder speech delay so now it has become a specific learning disorder so that is why it cannot be omitted now dsm 5 as you can see social communication and restricted fixate restricted and fixated interest definitely here it was speech and communication deficits language delay but here it has come to social communication and restricted and fixated interest now history if you see eugene bloyle is the first person to Uh, say like the word autism is used by him in schizophrenia as a four A's. Now also Leo Kanner uh, was the first person who named uh, the term like early infantile autism, and German scientist named Hans Asperger describes a milder form of autism now known as Asperger syndrome. Psychologist Bruno Bettelheim. popularized the term refrigerator mothers caused autism by not loving their children enough so that is uh, quite not acceptable but uh, that is just one theory infantile or autism is first listed in dsm the movie rain man i think you might have seen it um, it's really a good movie it's all about autism and uh, lighted up blue was adopted by united nations dsm 5 uh, folds all subcategories of the condition into one umbrella as asd like the first umbrella now this is the symbol the puzzle pattern reflects the complexity of asd now autism spectrum is usually in the second year of life approximately one third of children exhibit id like we mentioned id cannot be missed out that is intellectual disability then children who exhibited several language deficits received an asd diagnosis a year earlier children with autism disorder who exhibited repetitive behaviors such as hand flapping to walking are identified as asd at a younger age than those who did not exhibit such behavior now the prevalence of us is 4.5 in 10000 the median prevalence is about 8 in 10000 and sex distribution four times more common in boys than in girls 
സോഷ്യൽ ക്ലാസ് സ്റ്റഡി സപ്പോർട്ടഡ് ക്യാനസ് ഇൻഫ്രഷൻ ഓഫ് ആൻഡ് അസോസിയേഷൻ ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ഓട്ടിസം ആൻഡ് അപ്പർ സോഷ്യൽ ഇക്കോണമിക് സ്റ്റേറ്റസ് ആൻഡ് ബട്ട് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഫെയിൽ സ്റ്റഡി ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് സീൻ ഇൻ ഓൾ സോഷ്യൽ ഇക്കണോമിക് സ്റ്റേറ്റസ് ഇൻ ഓൾ കൺട്രീസ് സോ ഈ ടു പാത്തജിനസ് ഇസ് ജനറ്റിക് ആസ് വി ഓൾ നോ ഇറ്റ്സ് ഓൾവേസ് ബയോസൈക്കോ സോഷ്യൽ അപ്രോച്ച് ബട്ട് ഹിയർ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് മോർ ഓഫ് ജനറ്റിക് ബയോളജിക്കൽ ഇഫ് യു സീ വെയർ ഇറ്റ്സ് മോർ ഓഫ് ബയോളജിക്കൽ factors playing a big role since the uh, since it's a developmental disorder it is more uh, like starting at an earlier age so hence the biological uh, contribution is more in this so genetic uh, factors first degree relatives of affected individuals are 20 to 80 fold more likely to be affected 15% cases have known genetic mutation and if you see family studies increased rates of asd is seen in siblings of an index child as high as 50% in families with two or more children so concordance rate is very important now 46% in monozygotic pairs versus 0% in dizygotic in study and 96% monozygotic pairs versus 27 in dizygotic now these are the uh, genes to be noted down we have neurofibrinins shank 3 contactin associated protein 2 nirexin 1 and fragile x mental retardation 1 gene that is fmr1 gene a critical role in synaptic formation and function now this this fmr1 gene has been studied recently widely uh, because of its uh, uh, critical role in the synaptic formation and function genes that may contribute are in chromosome 2 7 16 17 now fragile x syndrome is something which is not to be forgotten x linked recessive disorder present in 2 to 3% of individuals but x uh, x chromosome fragile when grown in a specific medium special medium deficient in folic acid there is a site that commonly fractures so fragile it's so fragile okay so if you can see the picture here uh it's like you know that's the fragile site where there can be too much of uh, uh, chance of fracture the fmr protein that is fmr p contribute to neuroplasticity regulation of group 1 that is engler uh, loss of fmr p leads to increased engler 5 signaling activity clinical features idd um, gross and motor impairments and unusual phases microorganism then we had tuberculosis by multiple benign tumors autosomal dominant is found in 2% of children now biomarkers if you see that is uh, here we have something very specific that is abnormal signaling in 5HT system mTOR linked synaptic plasticity alterations in gaba inhibitory system then we have uh, first biomarker identified as increased serotonin platelet platelet acquired cert and then we have genes that mediate cert SLC 64A and 5HT2A gene that encode the same protein in the platelets and the blood. So, as a summary, we have abnormal signaling in 5HT, mTOR are linked plasticity mechanisms, alterations in GABA in the system. Now, if you see this um, autism child's brain and an average case, you will, you will find that both structural and functional neuroimmunity studies have suggested that there is an increased total brain volume in children less than 4 years of age whose neonatal head circumference are normal by the age of 5 to 20 percent develop macrocephaly so one study found that increase in amygdala now this is very significant in the first few years followed by a decrease in size over and there is also size of striatum has also been found in several studies to be enlarged with a positive correlation of striatal size with frequency of repetitive behavior now immunological studies we have this um, several reports have suggested that immunological incompatibility that is maternal and fetus so may contribute to autistic disorder then lymphocytes with maternal antibodies which raise a possibility of embryonic neural tissue like the maternal antibodies fight with the embryonic neural tissues and causing the damage during gestation 
and then we have uh, considerable controversy over MR immunization might be a causative factor. So that is not supported. Prenatal and perinatal, prenatal again advanced maternal and paternal age at work, maternal gestation bleeding, gestation diabetes, and firstborn baby. Now, perinatal risk factors, birth trauma, fetal distress, low birth weight, low APGAR score, congenital malformation, ABO, RH factor incompatibility, hyperbilirubinemia, also hypoxia. Now, comorbid neurological disorders, we have 4 to 32 percent of grand mal seizures, 20 to 25 percent of ventricular enlargement in CT scans. Various EEG abnormalities are found in 10 to 83 percent. Although no EEG finding is specific to autistic disorder, there is some indication of failed cerebral lateralization. So, uh, one, one thing we can take from this slide is 4 to 32 percent of grand mal seizures, and that is a large number. And 20 to 25 have ventricular enlargement on CT scan. So, psychosocial theory again, like uh, studying parents of children with autism spectrum, with parents of Normal children show, uh, like uh, like discussed before, the theory um, that the mother is not taking refrigerated mother sort of theory it doesn't work out. It's just it's it's a failed study. So here there are no difference basically. Other etiologies are phenylketonuria, neurofibromatosis, congenital rubella, and uh, these uh, congenital rubella. Uh, Children with this have autistic like features. Then, post mortem and neuroimaging studies show that uh, there is uh, optical abnormalities, emotional deficits, and social difficulties have pathology in the limbic system. Post mortem studies decrease in the Purkinje cells and granule cells in the cerebellum. Increase, including a lack of gliosis, indicates the prenatal origin. Now, a series of MRI studies focusing on the cerebellar worms reveal finding of decrease in mid sagittal area of vermal lobules uh, 6 and 7. Now, if you see the vermal lobules, now let's see. So, this is a vermal lobule. Now, here it is decreased. If you can see this region, especially. Now, limbic system. There is a decreased dendritic arthritization. Now, these are usually described uh, increased neuronal packing density of neurons, amygdala enlargement. So, since there is macrocephaly, like you can see, everything is enlarged. There is only decreased neuronal size in the limbic system and decreased dendritic arthritization and increased neuronal packing density of neurons. But otherwise, amygdala is initially enlarged and then it reduces in size and then there is a, um, one hypothesis that abnormalities in the amygdala cortical limb system that can regulate the social cognitive usually the social cognitive processes by the prefrontal cortex so the, the, so the social processes by the actually the frontal also by the prefrontal but the cognitive is by the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex so here there is a disruption. Now amygdala is for um, an emotional um, uh, center for basically for the uh, for for fear basically. So there is something like uh, affecting that amygdala and cortical loops, so which can cause social disturbances. FMRI, if you can see. That is the autism group. Uh, now, uh, here again, like it is this area. So you can see the prefrontal cortex, basically. The prefrontal or dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. And one more theory is that theory of mind, that is the ability to attribute, attribute emotional states of others to others. Now, fMRI studies find the right temporal lobe and the areas become active activated in control. This difference has been hypothesis to the MNS, mirror neuron system. Now in the control group, whenever this activation occurs, there is, there is the activation of 
this, that is the two brains. Here, if you can see, one activation does not cause. This is the autism group. So, this mirror neuron system is defective. That is what they mean to say. That is a theory of mind. The ability to attribute the mind self states atypical patterns of frontal lobe activation have been found during phase process. So, Diagnosis and clinical features, again, deficits, persistent deficits in social communication, social interaction across multiple contexts, deficits in social emotional reciprocity. Okay, I smile at you, you smile at me. I cry and you feel like consoling me. Now, that is social emotional reciprocity. Deficits in non-verbal communicative behavior, hi, and then they won't be able to re reply to you. Deficits in developing, maintaining, and understanding relationship. Restrictive, repetitive patterns of behavior or interest. Stereotype of repetitive moments. Insistence of sameness. Highly restricted, fixated interest. Hyper or hypo reactivity to the sensory input. Now, this is DSM 5. And we can again specify here that ICD 11 in the pre. In the beginning we have seen now it is going to come up with all the specifiers so it's going to be much more easier and persistent deficit uh, that is may not develop a social smile older babies may lack anticipatory posture less frequent and poor eye to eye contact may not react strongly now by the school age observable de deficit and spontaneous play with peers a lack of conventional back and forth conversation, fewer shared interests. Now, cognitively more skilled in visual spatial tasks than verbal reasoning. Now, visual spatial like um, violin, they could be violin prodigy. They could be uh, instrumental use could be amazing. There could be they could be prodigious in that. But uh, the verbal reasoning and the social social emotional reciprocity. And the communication skills, everything will be on a very poor side. So generally desire friendship, but they lack the spontaneity. And uh, restrictive and repetitive patterns of behavior and interest is that developmentally expected exploratory play is restricted. That toys and orphans are often manipulated in a ritualistic manner. It's like, you know, like it's just fixed, like uh, they cannot be changed. Do not show level of Im imitative play. They cannot imitate. Of course, it comes down to mirror neuron system. The activity activities and play are more rigid and monotonous. And uh, in early and middle childhood, if you see, often seem to be enjoy spinning, banging, watching, water flowing, frank compulsive behaviors such as lining up object, like uh, the movie uh, Amelie, in which uh, they show the child to be exactly autistic and uh, watching the river flow, taking pleasure in small, small, small things like she used to line up the object, bury the object under the tree and wait for it for a longer time. So, and she has an attachment to a particular inanimate object. So this is very typical. And um, they, they, they have this uh, uh, increased rate like if, if it is going to be coupled with IDD, then we are going to have increased rates of self-stimulatory and self-injurious behaviors and stereotypes, mannerisms, grimacings emerge most frequently. Now, associated physical characteristics are do not show early handedness, lateralization, remains ambidextrous, and higher rates like such as ear, ear malformations are seen. Then dermato, abnormal dermatoglyphics is one such thing to be noted. Then associated behavioral symptoms, disturbance in language development and usage. Like insignificant, difficult, have significant difficulty in putting sentences together, meaningful. Now again, they could go up to language disorder. Like they don't have a prosody, they don't have, they cannot converse fluently. Uh, the typical pattern of babbling may be minimal or absent. Some children vocalize noises, screeches, nonsense syllables in a stereotyped fashion. Now, words and even entire sentence may drop in and drop off. Like, uh, like I said, it could go up to a language disorder. And speech may contain echolalia. A child with 
autistic disorder that is the frequent pronoun reversal pronoun reversals are present you want the toy like i want the toy now i am going to say you want the toy i am the autistic child so i i the first person uh, won't uh, that perception won't be there about 50% of autistic children never develop useful speech so next is intellectual disability about 30% of children have intellectual disability 30% mild to moderate 45 to 50% severely profound intellectually disabled uh, irritability includes aggression self injurious behavior severe temper tantrums and the uh, aggression may be rising um, uh, head banging skin picking biting oneself and instability of mood and affect some children exhibit changes and response to sensory stimulus may be like uh, some children have heightened pain and showing little response to normal speaking ears uh, may may tend to uh, listen to the sound of this watch that is very interesting enjoy vestibular stimulation spinning swinging and up and down movements hyperactivity and tension are both common behaviors in children short attention span the cautious skills now this is what i was talking about some are extremely talented now they can be called prodigies so some individuals with autism spectrum have the cautious or splinter skills these are called splinter skills of great proficiency like they have broad memories calculating abilities they can go beyond their peers they are called prodigies now uh, it includes hyper hyperlexia they can read well they can memorize they can recite now like i said visual spatial instrumental um, music it could be anything now these are the famous personalities with autism archimedes then we have kurt godel regemendel hans and hans christian andersen and also one more beto one so insomnia occur in uh, 44 to 83 percent and medication again melatonin can be given minor infection like uh, and gi symptoms are common like excessive burping constipation loose loose bowel uh, movements laboratory examination eeg shows abnormalities like paroxysm like you can see diffuse and focal spikes paroxysm and spike wave patterns if the if the child is having Uh, at seizure then that completely show uh, spike patterns multiple multi focal spike activity uh, and a mixed discharge so it is significantly higher in mg retarded children so you can see the study here that is auditory p300 for the brain uh, stimuli have been shown to be abnormal in autism so assessment tools are cars child autism rating scale now what we use is the autism diagnostic interview revise and uh, peds m chart m chart also we are using and also sat um, these are all the most commonly used adults uh, m chart and sat are the most commonly used and uh, now this is the one that is given in india it is neurodevelopmental disabilities and autism in india in a muslim study that is indp asd now if you see here uh, everything else is filled and we have to check for the autism score now we have to write the name of the assessor and everything and then like the benefits are going to be there for the children and indian scale for assessment is social relationship and reciprocity emotional responsiveness speech language communication behavior patterns sensory aspects and cognitive function now differential diagnosis we have like a said, social or pragmatic communication disorder because i i previously said there could be a total language disorder as such can't understand the rules of communication can't take turns in conversation respond to verbal or non verbal cues of listener and found with greater frequency in individuals actually then we have child now this is a very good difference now how do we differentiate schizophrenia childhood onset with the autism now it is rarely under 5 years now this is always 2 years a uh, minimum of 2 years 
uh, incidence one percent. This is less than one percent. Uh, sex ratios four is to one, one is to one point six seven to one. Family history not increased, likely increased. Prenatal, perinatal always increased, not increased. Now, uh, behavioral characteristics, poor social relatedness, may have aberrant language, may have stereotypies, and here we have hallucination, delusions. Also, there could be disorganized behavior which can mimic these things. There could be obsessive behavior which can mimic, but it should be very clear. We should we should have a very clear um, tool, or we can we can use very clear observation strategies to diagnose. Adaptive functions are always impaired. Deterioration in the functioning. Level of intelligence may be IDD. Maybe it may be associated like. Uh, like we already discussed, it's one third, and here it's usually within the normal range, maybe below average. And pattern of IQ typically higher performance than verbal. This is more even. Grandma seizures four to thirty two percent and low incidence. Intellectual de developmental delay with behavioral disturbances, language disorder, like I mentioned. That is, you can see the difference now. Nonverbal communication is impaired. In language disorder, it is usually active. Associated deafness is usually not there in ASD, but it is there in language disorder. Then language abnormality is present, and it's uncommon. Intellectual impairment is impaired, and it is uncommon. Social communication, restrictive, repetitive behaviors are present. It is absent. Now, congenital deafness and hearing also we should be taking into consideration. And for some prognosis, usually IQ more than 70 with an average adaptive skills who develop communicative language by the age of five years to seven years have best prognosis. So IQ more than 70, average adaptive skills who develop communicative language by the age of five to seven years. Now, so there are some people who may not be developing those communicative skills at all. Now, those pro that prognosis is very good. So with very poor. Now here we have it is five to seven good prognosis. Then definitely with the help of speech therapy and more uh, vocational training, definitely this child is going to have a very good prognosis. Early intensive behavioral inter uh, interventions and um, prognosis improves if the home environment is very supportive. This is very important. Now the treatment psychosocial interventions. Here it is very classic. Is what is given, but it's more than uh, it's more of a teamwork and autism. Early intensive behavioral and developmental interventions, social skill approaches, behavioral interventions, and cognitive behavior therapy for repetitive behaviors and associated symptoms, interventions for comorbid symptoms, education interventions, and psychopharmacological interventions. Now, what are these psychopharmacological? We'll be seeing it later, but we'll go into the A, B, C. Now, psychosocial, uh, this is a very nice thing that uh, they have uh, brought in. Uh, uh, you can see UCLA or LOAS based model in which there is intensive and manualized intervention. Primarily utilizes the techniques derived from applied behavior analysis. Like uh, it's like one to one basis, it's so many hours per week. The therapist and child will work on practicing specific social skills. It's one at a time and one to one, and it is only a few hours a week because we cannot rush on this, and it's very systematic. The specific social skills, language usage, and other target play skills with reinforcement rewards provided for accomplishment and mastery of skills. So here we have early start demo model in which the interventions are administered in naturalistic settings, such as in daycare, at home, during play with children. Now, this is uh, both at daycare and also at home. Parents are typically taught. So here comes the parents. In UCLA and LOVA's model, we don't have parents there. It's basically a, a train. And here it is also parents develop basic play skills, relationship skills. Again, ABA comes into play. ABA is applied behavior analysis. So, regarding on the behavior, they are analyzed.
and here we have the parent training approaches this particular for the parents now this is includes the pivotal response training and uh, here we have the parents are taught to facilitate the social and communication development within home like target kp or social or uh, pivotal social behaviors other parent training approaches focus on language acquisition so um, basically when parents are going to say a i love you you love me we are going out today so all these are very much stressed and we have lots of time at home as parents can do a lot so here we have another example of parent training is han and mohan words program so then we have the social skill approach as social skill training typically provided by the therapist to the children the children are given guided practice in initiating social conversation emotion identification and regulation are often included in learning how to label emotions in given social situations how to attribute emotional reactions and the goals are the uh, practice in group setting the child will be uh, able to use the technique in day to day settings so here behavioral interventions and for cbt and for repetitive now for cbt we can give um like cbt is a very uh, widely used technique in children applied the behavioral analysis has been found to be somewhat effective early intervention is recommended for repetitive behaviors that are self injuries now behavioral interventions may need to be combined with pharmacological intervention now cbt like i said um Uh, we have this punishment and we have reward now in autism children it's better to go with reward like you know conditioning so it is uh, good here there's no much studies but still we can go for it and intervention for comorbid symptoms it is neurofeedback now neurofeedback is very interesting this modality has been administered even for adhd anxiety and social interaction by providing computer games which in which desired behavior is reinforced the child wears electrodes that monitor electrical activity in the brain aim is to prolong the electrical activity present during the desired behaviors now uh, management of insomnia and autism spectrum disorder that is both behavioral and psychological interventions may be administered reinforcement and attention of being awake should be removed leading to gradual extinction and the staying awake behavior so several studies use massage therapy before the time and educational interventions that is treatment and education of autistic communication related handicapped children that is the teach program now this teach program if you can see it's originally developed in north carolina it is a structured teaching who have difficulty with perception so this is the teach like you can see how it is numbered and then everything is numbered and everything is coded and everything is also color coded so that the children doesn't have any confusion and things are very particular like this color belongs to so this is a way of teaching it incorporates so like I, like i said the visual the visual is more than the perception I mean, more, more, more than the uh, you know cognition. Like only just it's not about uh, tactile. It's also visual. So visual supports and picture schedule to aid in teaching academic subjects as well as uh, socially appropriate responses. The physical environment is arranged to support visual learning and to promote autonomy and social. Now these are numbers, and the children are allotted each. table or each row and they have to take care of their own things and the, these are the class rules it's all written very basically it's a very elaborate like you can see here also it's very elaborate and it's very clear like for the children without any confusion so it's going in their own track to bring them to our track each a computer based now this is very good because here we have a, the settings it's like basically a game right here we have uh, surprised happy and uh, this provides a child child behaviorally based instruction that is appealing the let's face it program is a computerized program to teach recognize and 
seven interactive computer games that target facial expression happy sad uh, crying crying and then anger like that attention to eye region in the face holistic face recognition and identifying emotional uh, expression because this region alone is enough for emotional recognition so that's why they are atten- attention is given to the uh, eye region of the face you can see here happy sad um now you have to fill in the choice now this is for happy this is for sad and this is how they get points okay so the train uh, the train children had improvement on their ability to focus on the re- eye region and improve their facing skills the work studies using virtual reality uh and one have to provide evidence of their value in one study virtual cafe for children allowed the children to practice ordering like uh, virtual uh, reality is now taking over in many areas especially for children with autism now psychopharmacological interventions are for number one irritability we can give risperidone the dose is 0.5 to 1.5 second generation antipsychotic risperidone and ibuprofen again they can increase appetite metabolic side effects has to be taken care of prolactin levels may increase gynecomastia in uh, young uh, children and young boys and uh, so all these things have to be taken into consideration and also it may also contribute to orthostatic hypertension so uh, the efficacy and tolerability were found over six month period and the good responders when rapid return of symptoms were there when the uh, responders when risperidone was discontinued so another is uh, eritropozole without any side effect but there is also some weight gain in acetosia during a study period of eight weeks now olanzapin reduced irritability but there was significant weight gain so hyperactivity uh, impulsivity and attention best is metalphenidate now it is given as 0.25 to 0.5 mg per kg for youth with autism spectrum disorder and adhd symptoms and uh, it is one of the best choice because we have metalphenidate minimum go for risperidone or any other antipsychotics so children with autism spectrum frequently develop increased irritability side effects include severe tachycardia and gi upset and sleep disturbance emotional disturbance among non stimulants we have atomoxetin was found better than the placebo clonidin also is uh, good for autism with hyperactivity and also one case so now repetitive and stereotypic behavior we have second generation of psychotic even ssris were found effective and also valproate fluoxetin was slightly found better then we have risperidone is found to be effective in targeting restrictive and repetitive behaviors then uh, we have agents uh, administered for behavioral impairment based on open trials we have pediatrin 50 to 200 clozapine we have aggression and correction drugs when they coexist with psychotic ziprasidone in children with resistant children then lithium is used for aggression then we have uh, agents used for uh, behavioral impairment in autism spectrum disorder without evidence of efficacy we have anandidin that is uh, it blocks nmda receptors then we have flomoprimin naltrexone these are uh, like you know naltrexone based on notion that uh, endogenous would reduce endogenous opioids would reduce the uh, autistic symptoms and also tetrahydrobiopterin that is 3 mg per kg significant improvement in social interactions for up to 6 months then low dose of naltrexone with self injurious behavior and effective 18.75 mg per day then complementary and alternative medicine approaches we have the music therapy we have the yoga melatonin for late on sleep then vitamin c multivitamins essential fatty acids all these things then red syndrome is by of andreas red and progressive condition after some months of the normal development head circumference is normal with birth and developmental milestones are unremarkable generally between 6 to 6 months to 2 years now prevalence is 6 uh, to 7 it's purely in girls then we have the uh, 
it's a progressive deteriorating course after an initial normal period is compatible with metabolic disorder and the enzyme metabolic ammonia is deficient in red syndrome it is likely that red syndrome is a genetic basis it has uh, been seen in primarily in girls and case reports so far indicate uh, complete concordance in monozygotic twins and diagnosis and clinical features the signs often include loss of powerful hand movements hand wringing licking biting fingers tapping and loss of uh, previously acquired speech psychomotor retardation and ataxia the head circumference both basal ridges and produces microcephaly all language skills are lost and both repetitive and so communicative and social skills seem to plateau the developmental levels between 6 months to 1 year seizures in up to 75% irregular respiration breath holding spells and uh, episodes of hyperventilation muscle tone changes from an initial hypotonic condition to spasticity to rigidity after 10 years they may be wheelchair bound and there may be muscle wasting rigidity and no language ability now if you see the difference that is deterioration of head circumference and overall growth and aberration aberrant uh, development is usually present from early on hand motor movements are uh, always present may or may not appear poor coordination and ataxia and ataxia present and gross motor function is good then we have verbal abilities that are completely lost here it is a markedly aberrant to relatively mild respiratory irregularities are very characteristic and here it is absent seizures often occur so treatment is asymptomatic anticonvulsants behavior therapy physiotherapy now cdd is something which is characterized by a uh, marked regression in intellectual social and language uh, fluency uh, functioning and uh, after at least two years of apparently normal development it is also known as heller syndrome or disintegrative psychosis now we had one girl uh, who was like around uh, six years of age and uh, she had uh, total uh, loss of bowel and bladder control motor skills social and adaptive gone her language was uh, almost nil and reciprocal uh, this happened all after the age of 4 years till then everything was normal normal social developmental milestones and reciprocal social communication skills many neurological associated feature was a there was seizure results so so differential diagnosis again red syndrome then we have the uh, before the onset of childhood disintegrative disorder the language has usually progressed to sentence formation there is a autistic disorder in whom gra- language gradually does not exceed single words and phrases now it is uh, plateaus on speech in most of the cases the obvious deteriorating course in rare cases and treatment childhood disintegrative disorder includes same components available in treatment of autistic disorder now as per this is what you see my name is kam uh, sharif's movie where um, he has this uh, significant delays in language and cognitive development only social interaction is restricted otherwise uh, restricted interest in behavior might be there but uh, there there are no significant delays in language and cognitive development. in position means as per the described syndrome of autistic psychopathy physiology of the infancy is a complex genetic physiology and the features are like we mentioned it is uh, uh, markedly abnormal and verbal communication gestures failure to develop clear relationship at expected level restricted interest and patterns of behavior are present exhibit no language delay or adaptive Now, IQ is almost normal. Uh, treatment is aimed to promote social communication. They are often rigid on grades. Uh, self-sufficiency and problem-solving techniques are there. And TDD MOS we have. Uh, it's again present. So it can be anything. Like it can be like a combination. So treatment is basically symptomatic based. So here we have the conclusion. Uh, a perception of autism has evolved over time. Today, it is recognized that 
depend on neurologically based disorders of significant major public health problem. Researchers have struggled to find the cause of for the disorder without great success. Despite the difficulty, researcher continues in ever, ever more sophisticated directions. Numerous treatments have developed that help children with autism to maximize their potential to learn and become socially fluent. So this is a summary. Here we have the neurodevelopmental syndromes, the group of neurodevelopmental syndromes, the genetic, neurological, and perinatal and prenatal factors. The treatment includes social skills, education, and psychological approach. Red syndrome onset after six months of normal development with loss of purposeful movements, stereotypic notions, and loss of previously acquired speech, irregular respiration, and mobility. Childhood disintegrative disorder, marked regression in intellectual, social, uh, and language function, bowel and bladder control of the two years of normal development. As per this, we have the disorder qualitative impairment to the support of social interaction and behavioral oddities without delays in English development. These are my references. Thank you so much. Thank you. So April 2nd is the World Autism Awareness Day. The theme is, uh, the theme uh, for April 2nd is, uh, this, this year's theme has to be noted. Thank you.